Mobilization, it, to me, suggests movement. It's use. It's connecting research to users so that the knowledge can become part of the, of the practice. And the, the, the research can continue, but it's much more dynamic. Because I think that the idea of dissemination is, is, is sort of a very passive thing. The research is done, now here are the findings. And what we're saying now with knowledge mobilization is, wow, look what we've discovered in this study. Let's together see where this will take us in our thinking. And now, what, once we're here, what are the new questions that we now have to ask, given the fact that we now have made this leap in our thought? And so it's more dynamic and is mobilizing what we are learning. And the, it becomes more of a cycle so that we will continue to research and, and as new questions arise. I think when we considered knowledge dissemination as academics, I don't think we were challenged to be particularly creative in the past. Model, in, in the past. Instead, we saw it more as reporting. I think what the new emphasis on knowledge mobilization is saying to us is that this is not enough, that this works for a particular audience. But I think we're being asked to consider audiences who are going to be the users of our research. I think we have to consider them in a way that we have not had to in previous uh, dissemination attempts. I think mobilization goes beyond where the information goes. Mobilization is creating ways and means to help people actually use, interrogate, interpret, synthesize new knowledge and to apply it to their context in some way, in a meaningful way. I think there are certain types of research paradigms that lend themselves more to enabling knowledge mobilization. And the types of paradigms that would promote knowledge mobilization in the greater society, within education, other disciplines, would be ones that are collaborative and based on constructivist frameworks. We as academics had to be very conscious of how we support and facilitate knowledge mobilization. We have to become much better at it. And I'm very pleased to see that Shirk is moving in that direction and we have other national funding bodies that are taking a different stand and a different view on research and how we help others in society use and understand that research and knowledge. Knowledge uh, mobilization, as I understand it, is certainly more than, than research dissemination. Research dissemination is obviously part of it, taking theory and bringing it into some kind of, of setting. But we also have to have some kind of knowledge that moves or allows us to move from theoretical kinds of understandings into practical settings. But we all, finally, we have to understand what constitutes a practical setting in a contextualized, highly specific situational way. That understanding also informs the theory that we use eventually or that we have eventually. So in that sense, the context informs our theory and knowledge. Knowledge mobilization, I think as we understand it today, gives acceptance to the notion that there is experiential understanding and it's valuable and that constitutes important knowledge. What does it have to do with constructivism? The, ten, uh, the, the, the proponents of constructivism argue that knowledge is in itself 
constructed locally, situationally bound, and tied up with learners and individuals. That may be so, but I think we have to have both sides of that coin. There's, there's all kinds of knowledge and understanding that we would argue transcends a particular setting and, 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 and situation. But that doesn't mean that the knowledge that is situationally bound is unimportant. So in that sense, uh, I would argue knowledge mobilization as we understand it today uh, allows for, in fact, probably um, gives much more importance to the situational or situated notions of understanding. that this very broad acceptance of dissemination and mobilization uh, might be seen as a weakening of the kinds of traditional research that we have all aspired to. Um, I would have another take on that and I would see it as our role as educators to do our own kind of knowledge mobilization, to challenge our colleagues in other disciplines, to also think about multiple forms of dissemination, and knowledge mobilization in the way that we are conducting it. We do research in education because we believe it is one of the ways in which we change the world for the better. It is because we have a contribution to make. It is because we want to work with other professionals, other people in the community uh, to improve what we do, uh, to make things better, to uh, develop and grow the civil society of which we're all so proud, to increase the processes in a democratic society. I think it's a very big mandate. I think it's an extremely worthy and meritorious mandate. And I would say that this is a call not only to researchers in education, it is a call to all researchers who have the privilege and the responsibility of changing and shaping the world for the better. Thank you.